Hi friends, today I'm here with my dog Max. <laughs> oh, and we're gonna read you a story today. Yay! And this one's called The Very Smart Pea and the Princess to Be. It's by Minnie Gray, and that is the author of the story. And the title of the book is The Very Smart P and the Princess to Be. So yesterday you read a story about the princess and the pea. And this book is going to be about the pea. And the pea is going to be talking in this story. And he's going to tell his story like as a pea. All right, let's listen. Ooh, it looks like a garden. The Very Smart Pea and the Princess to Be. Many years ago, I was born in the palace garden among rows of carrots and beets and cabbages. I nestled snugly in a velvety pod with my brothers and sisters. I felt a tingle and I knew that somehow I would be important. Oh, so there's that little pea in the pea pod. And I, my dad used to have a garden when I was a little girl and he had these peas in his garden. They grew on a, like a vine. And I would pick these pea pods and I'd crack open the pea pod and there'd be little peas in them. And they tasted so yummy and sweet. I loved them. The time came for us to go to the palace kitchen. We were shelled and put in a bowl. We we're going to be part of a new recipe. Then suddenly I was picked from the pile. I was put in a little box with soft tissue to protect me from bruising. And I was taken to the queen. <gasps> Ooh. So this little pea is going to the queen. At this point in my story, I'm going to have to give you some background information. Let's start with the queen. A year earlier, before I even started to grow on my pea plant, the queen had been nagging her son. You are nearly 34 years old, Prince, she said. It's, it really is high time you married. The public expects it. Your kingdom demands it. And if you're not married within one year, I shall stop your allowance. Ooh, allowance. What's an allowance? Allowance is money you get for doing chores. The prince got quite a large allowance and he really didn't want to be want it to be taken away. So he got lots of money and he didn't want that to be taken away. I'll start looking for a bride immediately, mother, he said. And the search began. The prince traveled the known world. He met princesses of all shapes and sizes with a wide range of hobbies and interests, but none of them seemed like a real princess. And somehow they were not right for him. Hmm? So I got too loud, too quiet, too grumpy, too sleepy, too energetic, too scruffy, too tidy, too paint, too scary. So this one had some strange pets. <laughs> After a year's search, the prince returned home feeling glum. Oh, that's enough, shouted the queen. She stormed off to the palace kitchen. She came back with me in my little box. Now, said the queen, listen carefully. This is something only queens know. A real princess will be able to feel this little pea as she sleeps, even if she's sleeping on top of 20 mattresses and feather beds. And you're going to marry the first girl who can feel this pea. Oh, I see it in her hand. She's holding it up. Months passed. I spent most nights in the darkness under a pile of 20 mattresses and feather beds and princesses. Oh, so nobody could feel the pea. 
In the morning, the queen would ask, And how did you sleep, my dear? And the princesses had been properly brought up, and they always answered politely, Like a log, thank you, ma'am, or like a baby, thank you, ma'am. And they all said, What a comfortable bed. They were, as I said, all very polite princesses. The prince will never find his princess at this rate, I thought to myself, so I must help somehow. Oh, so the P said that he's going to help. One night a furious storm raged. Boom, boom, crashed the lightning and the thunder. Thunderclaps sh shook the walls. The lightning flashed through the window panes. There was a little knock on the palace door. A small white person stood on the doormat. Could this be the real princess? Gasped the queen. Ooh, does she look like a princess? At the door? Mm. Before she could say a word, the small wet person was put to bed on top of the 20 mattresses and feather beds. With me, of course, underneath. In the darkness under the mattresses, I recognized the soft snoring. It was my gardener. I must help, I thought. I tried jiggling and wiggling, and then snoring continued quietly. I must do something, I thought. I inched my way to the edge, and then I started to climb. Slowly, I struggled to the top of the towering pile. I softly rolled across the pillow right to the girl's ear. There's something large and round and very uncomfortable in your bed under you, I whispered. And while she slept, I told her about the large, round, uncomfortable thing for three hours. <gasps> oh, what's that large, round, uncomfortable thing? Yeah, it's him, the pea. You see the pea by her ear? In the morning, the queen asked the girl how she had slept. Oh, it was awful, she sighed. Something large and round and uncomfortable was bothering me all night. The queen was delighted to hear this. The wedding was lovely. The queen was interested to meet the new princess's parents. And I'm sure they will live happily ever after. As for me, I became a very important artifact. And I now have my own glass case. I am on display. And if you visit the right museum and look in the right place, you may chance to see me. Oh, look at So they, they <laughs> see that pea in the glass case? Oh, look at They got married. <gasps> And the end. And she was the gardener the whole time. Oh, the end. So she was the gardener, but turned out to be a princess, right? Oh, yes. So sometimes princesses were very uh, picky and they wanted things a certain way. And um, yeah. And that's why the pee bothered them, right? All right, I hope you enjoyed our story today. That was a fun one. Um, please answer the questions. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Max, do you want to say goodbye? Max is sleeping. Oh, there he is. Bye. Say bye, friend. <laughs> His tail's wagging. Bye, friend.